Good. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's been a great day here today at Cube Day India, the first major CNCF event in India. So it's a pleasure speaking here. And uh, there have been some amazing talks uh, all day long, some really great energetic conversations. And we'd like to continue this momentum a little further. Uh, so the zero interest rate phenomena is truly over. Companies worldwide are focusing on managing their costs in tooling, also like parallelly to their op performance optimizations. We're going to be talking about how a few years ago we made a few mistakes that almost cost us upwards of $100,000. And these are mistakes in our long-term metric Prometheus storage. And uh, yeah, that's what, we're going to go that's what we're going to talk about. We're all humans. We're all going to make thousands of mistakes in our lives. It just so happened that these mistakes symphonize so beautifully together that each mistake uh, like exponentially increases the cost. So let's dive right into it. So who are we? Well, uh, I'm Shubham and this is Ankur. We're uh, the founding team at Zen Duty, uh, an incident response platform. We have accumulated years of experience making mistakes, learning from them, and uh, advocating for best practices, uh, best practices in production and SRE teams worldwide. So uh, what is this talk really going to be about? Firstly, we're going to talk about why we need this, needed a solution like Thanos in the first place. What other solutions were present in the market? So this was Victoria Metrics, Cortex, and we're going to see how they compare against Thanos. Then our uh, production setup and our expectations from that. And then the good, the bad, and the ugly. Not the Clint Eastwood movie, but what went wrong, how we fixed it, the actual cost, and the potential cost for our missing configurations. So just to give you some context into what we're building and the scale that we could run into, this is what ZenDuty looks like, uh, the incident response platform. So we connect with the entirety of our customers' infra support and comms channels and uh, deliver them uh, alerts across all platforms. With the context straight from the monitoring stack, we help them automate everything from their first alerts. So naturally, uh, when our business started picking up, our production scale also needed to ramp up that fast. With that, we took the cue that our observability stack needs to be just as reliable, and we need to step, step that up a little. So why would we need Thanos? Well, Prometheus has a simple and reliable operational model. It's capable of, capable of tracking millions of measurements in real time and with powerful, cap uh, powerful and pretty capable uh, cap capabilities of visualization and query querying via Grafana. But after a certain scale, it has some shortcomings. And these shortcomings, they fail to answer questions that naturally fast scaling teams come across. Questions like, how can I store petabytes of historical data? How can I store that without sacrificing response query times? Can we access all our metrics from a single API query? How can I merge replicated data collected via Prometheus HA setups? And turns out, Thanos was the solution to all these questions. So uh, yeah, a few major reasons why we chose Thanos. Firstly, the global query view. So Prometheus enc encourages a functional sharding approach. Even a single Prometheus server provides enough capability to liberate users from the complexities of horizontal uh, scaling. And regardless, you would still want to access all this data through a single UI or API, which is the global view we're talking about. So for example, you can, uh, query, query, you can generate multiple queries for a single Grafana graph, but they're all going to be against a single Prometheus server. With Thanos, however, you can create, like you can query mul multiple Prometheus servers at the same time because they're all available from the single endpoint. Next, we have reliable historical data storage. Naturally, Prometheus uh, sidecar watches, so Thanos sidecar watches Prometheus for new blocks of persisted data. And it pushes this to the object storage, which is, in our case was AWS S3. Then we have downsampling. So once you start querying uh, historical data, you'll realize that there are some fundamental big O complexities uh, that make your query slower and slower as you, you know, retrieve weeks, months, and eventually years worth of data. And the solution to this problem is good old downsampling, which is reducing the sampling rate of the signal. So with downsampling, you can zoom out to a larger time frame and still maintain the same sample, uh, same number of samples, 
and thus keeping your queries responsive. And lastly, we have high availability. So Prometheus has an HA model that essentially collects data twice, so which is as simple as it could be. However, the merge and deduplicated view of both streams that Thanos provides is a huge usability improvement. So we considered a few different solutions at that time, but there were a few problems in every one of them. So a few of them weren't community-driven. They were either too young, they either did not support object storage, uh, or just their general integration with the rest of our observability stack was not as efficient as we expected it to be. So Thanos is where all the great engineering teams were at that time. That's where we decided to be. But if you were having this conversation today, it would go very differently, because you have some good competition from Victoria Metrics and Cortex, depending on what you're looking for. I'll give a quick shout out to even last line, who's trying to build something in this space. Do check them out as well. And uh, so let's take a look at how we implemented Thanos, our beautiful Titanic before it hit the iceberg. So uh, Thanos runs as a sidecar to the Prometheus instance, and it pushes blocks of object data storage to your S3. We had implemented Prometheus functional sharding, which means that we were uh, scraping the same data twice from multiple AZs. This setup requires Thanos ruler to set up the PromQL equations for alerting, and it should be in turn connected to the Prometheus alert manager over there for delivering the alerts to the final destinations. In our case, then UDN Slack. Uh, the Thanos querier uses the storage gateway to retrieve old data from our object storage, and it's used by teams for any analysis or to create internal or external dashboards for their PMs or any other team members. And in order to get faster query results, uh, the Thanos compactor that we talked about uh, is used to downsample the data and store it back to the object storage. Now let's see what we had uh, for log aggregation. Uh, so we implemented log aggregation via FluentBit, or the other word app that not a lot of us talk about. Well, uh, FluentBit is a well-known log aggregate tool, which is a worthy successor to FluentD. And we deployed the daemon set and started exporting our logs to open search. FluentBit uses a plugin to add extra labels to the log line for each log stream. And uh, for getting these extra labels, it queries the uh, Kubernetes API for labels like uh, pod name, namespace, annotations, and any other relevant information. So what if the Kubernetes API does not respond? What if for some reason it fails? And if that happens, it retries after some jitter. It retries and retries, and eventually pushes the data to the destination. That will, uh, this small caveat, somehow manage to form a little problem in a system. And what were expectations after this? Well, we spent a lot of time on this, OK? You know, it wasn't easy to co configure, but we got it configured. And our expectations was uh, effortless querying, cheap long-term metric storage, you know, leisurely downsampling data whenever and however you wanted. And in essence, just a much cleaner metrics and logging system. And yeah, this should work straight out of the box, right? It didn't. Not really. In an IIT, we saw a bunch of anomalies and errors popping up that we didn't make sense of initially. But sooner or later, it all came together. So the first in this series of unfortunate events, we had an issue with our net network topology. So while we were building a log and metric handling infrastructure, we missed to keep in mind some basics that cost us dearly. Next up, just plain old ca high cardinality. We were scraping too much data and metrics for our scale. And finally, our friendly downsampler that I've been talking up all this long, there was a mismatch in our implementation and our expectations uh, with the th Thanos downsampler causing an increase in network and storage costs. So this sounds intense. Well, it was. And uh, I'll pass the stage now on to Ankur, who was off the deep end when this happened. Let's see what he found. Uh, th thanks, Shivam. Uh, so to drill down, uh, this is a proper, this is a general network topology which looks like where you have multiple availability zone and multiple VPC. Uh, we, we were using that only when, when we were stuck with that issue. Uh, but the, the problem with this topology is that we were pushing, like he's mentioned, that our AWS storage uh, resource is AWS S3. So we were pushing a lot of logs data through S3. And they were actually traversing through NAT gateway, which means egress coast, and which got to a certain stage which impacted a lot to us, although this was not even 10% or 20% of it will come down to the majority part later. So how did we fix it? Uh, we actually added a VPC gateway endpoint, which identifies and separates 
our public and private uh, public and private uh, traffic to S3. So whatever traffic which needs to be go to S3 from our private servers, it will follow through VPC gateway and while others still go through the net gateway. This is how we actually fix the problem. The other issue was high cardinality. Uh, I'll explain to you what high cardinality is. Like Prometheus is very much capable of actually uh, tracking like millions of metrics. But what happens is that we sometimes miss out on uh, miss out on the cardinality issue when we are setting up these metrics alerts. For example, if you want to uh, put put a metrics just on a uh, pod name, which is non, not that dynamic. It's, it's not something which changes every second or every millisecond. Then it's fine. But if you're including something which is changing every millisecond or every second, for example, you would not want to actually club your uh, login session with timestamp. Or you would not want your request to be clubbed with timestamp. Or you would not want to club your request ID with your sessions also. Because that would lead to a very high cardinality because of the values are changing very frequently, which means Prometheus has to store multiple data for each metric, each unique metric that it's getting, and save it there, which adds to a lot of value. So, when when we were actually debugging our issue, which was uh, which was not related to that, we actually identified this this could be another problem, uh, which which was causing an issue and leading it to a lot of logs aggregation. So. The third one was uh, the downsampling. So, what we were this was a major issue which we faced, which was a main cause of the whole scenario why, why we are here, right? So, uh, if you see, if anyone has used Th Thanos uh, downsampling com compactor, they would know that uh, Thanos provides a very basic downsampling compactor where it provides you retention of very specific days and downsampling up to only two levels, like five minutes and one hour which we were using it earlier. The other problem there was, whenever we have to downsample any data, the main store, the main object store needs to be available. So for example, in this case, if a data needs to be downsampled after 40 days to a five minute, the main data needs to be stored for 40 days for sure. And after that, if we want to actually have a downsample to one hour, it would still need the original data to downsample. And it, so you are storing the same data thrice. Also, this downsampling over a problem of NAT gateway and high cardinality leads to much bigger issue. So how did we fix it? We actually uh, yeah. we went back and actually wrote our own Thanos compactor, uh, which we are planning to open source it in some time. It currently works uh, nicely with the Prometheus, but we're also testing it with Victoria metrics. So it should be live soon. So what we did here is we actually gave freedom to developers on, on the downsampling uh, fields. For example, now they can downsampling based on their own requirement, not just limited to five minutes or one hour. They can actually choose downsampling to 10 minutes, 30 minutes, even one hour. Also, they don't need to keep the original object store. They can actually remove it once the first downsampling is done. For example, in our case, what we did was we did a 10-minute downsample, which needs to be retained for 180 days. Once that is done, you can actually get rid of the main object store, which were, which were only keeping it for three days. That also means your downsampling needs to start before three days. And you can choose that option in this feature that we can delete the downsampling after three days and also start the downsampling whenever we want. It should be it, in this case, it should start before three days. And after that, when we have to downsample it to 30 minutes, we can just depend on the previous downsampling data, which is the 10 minutes in our case, and not, not based on the original downsample data. And this is what we did. So the other problem which Shubham mentioned, it was not a bigger of an issue, but we detected it after we fixed the Thanos downsampling data was. Fluent bid. We thought it, it since it's part of the same problem, we thought we'll actually discuss it here only. So what like most of you must be knowing that fluent bid, but it does it, it actually scrapes your application logs and actually push it to a object store. In our case, we're pushing it to the CloudWatch. 
Uh, but the problem with FluentBit in our case was that once we were collecting FluentBit data, we were using Cube API to append few more data. In our case, it was the pod and also the tracing ID, which we were appending it to that. We missed the basic part that what FluentBit does is if Cube API fails, it keeps on trying, it keeps on trying. And as the number of requests comes in, like initially it will be like 10 requests, which will pile up to 100 requests, 1,000. So those requests are keep trying to get that data. We did not realize it because like the data which we were suffering in Thanos compactor was in TBs. This data was GB. That's why this came into light when the TB issue was done and this was the second biggest problem for us. And the problem in our case was very simple. It was very naive also uh, that uh, in one of the new services which we released recently, the, we did not change the subpath, the mount subpath. So it was working fine on the local, but it was not working because that subpath was not even available, which he was trying to, the Q, through Cube API, it was trying to get. So it was costing money, right. So with proper monitoring, we were able to detect these anomalies. Uh, that, well, I, I would actually give credit to my team also for detecting it, but still it was not as soon as that we would have wanted. We have done better than now this by actually putting more better alarms and more better monitoring systems. Uh, but we, we all know that we don't actually give too much importance to logs, that how much would that cost. That we, give, we give a lot of importance to our database data that, that is costing us a lot, but logs we always think because they don't actually, we don't retain it for so long also, and we don't actually cater to that, the traffic, the network traffic, uh, which we are using it, right? So we did a calculation based on what the bill we also got, that what could have it costed, right? So this, this was the process data which we're assuming from the NAT gateway, 50 dB. And if you actually calculate with the hourly cost, it will come down to $32, not much. But in our case, it was processing 51,000 GB per month, which will come to $2,304. And if you calculate with both the data, it's $2,336. And this we were doing it over six NAT gateways since we are in a multi-AZ and a multi, multiple region environment. Still not a lot. Uh, the logging cost we estimated, it comes down to $1,700 uh, based on the CloudWatch order because it was in GB. But assume all of that in 6-7 clusters. So we were running 6-7 cluster of this, which accounted it to 100K. Gladly, we did not actually went this far and actually affected it, but still, it costed us a bit to actually learn that lesson, and that's why we are here to share it with you guys. So, uh, a few final words before uh, you know we leave you. The smallest mistakes, hardest to fix, and in turn, they're just much, much more uh, expensive. There's this quote uh, from Anthony Hopkins that I really like. The evolution of sentient life on this planet was created by one single tool, which is a mistake. So don't ca count out single mistakes at all. You, you don't know what other mistakes this is gonna pile on to become. Mm -hmm. Second, don't rush into things because it might be easy to drop in. So we see a lot of chatter in the last year or two about you know, shifting vendors, adopting open source solutions, and I'm all for that. But make sure that you know, you're doing your due diligence, you're not using something just because it's easy to drop in, and because you know there's a lot of hype around it, or you know they claim to be a silver bullet, nothing's ever going to be a silver bullet. And lastly, if you're a growing build fast, break fast team, it's often worth spending you know on extensive monitoring, especially you know if that's going to save you much more on you know saving you from errors like these. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. One small shout out to you know everyone at Kubernetes, Thanos, and Fluentbit who've been you know tirelessly maintaining. So I, I think there are a few Kubernetes maintainers here today. Thank you for everything you do. And yeah, that's all the time. Thank you everyone for listening. Uh, this is towards the end of the day, so it's nice to see a full auditorium as well. Uh, we have a few uh, socials over here if you want to get in touch with us. Uh, we also have a pretty active Slack community and an SRE uh, meetup community if you want to you know see mo more of these talks. Uh, more of these investigations into site reliability. And yeah, that's us. Uh, if you're looking for a cost-effective facelift in your incident management systems, check out Zenuri. We're still hiring. And yeah, we're ready for uh, any questions.
Any questions or any stories which you want to share? Any mistakes which you yeah. have made? Huh? I'm sorry? Mimir from Gafana. So Mimir wasn't really... So this was, this, this is not a later story. This was done like a couple of years back. Yeah, yeah. So at that time, it was not that mature enough. Yeah, as yeah. I mentioned, uh, Mimir was, I, I'm not even sure if it was launched at that time. Yeah. If it was, it was very, very nascent. Hmm. So uh, we did so, not want to venture. So our environment is uh, pretty stable and we generally do thorough testing when we are, okay, the mistakes, apart from the mistake which we made, we do do it. Take, we do rely on things which are stable. We look for the yeah. most stable version. But yeah, it, th at that particular time, Thanos seems to be better. And yeah. still, we are continuing to use that. It's working really smoothly for us. Yeah. 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 So high cardinality problem, like, like I said, right? You don't rely on very dynamic uh, uh, metrics. So one of the examples which I gave you was not to rely on session IDs. If you have to track your user uh, behavior, do it on email ID or any user ID which you have. Other example would stay away from timestamps. That is the high volume cardinality problem which we tend to. Pods are fine, services are fine if you have to do it. Yeah. So once we did the downsampling, right, we anyways got rid of the main object store. So we didn't have to. So yeah, well, maybe in future we have to, we'll see. Yeah. yeah, you had some questions. I didn't get them. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so like, like I said, with the tool which we built, right, it's an incident management solution, right? So for us, we help companies stay reliable. That's what we focus on. And the reliability of our tool needs to be better than our customers' tools, right? So for that, our DR and everything needs to be multi-AZ and multi-regional. Now we have moved to multi-cloud also. For that particular region, we were moving that much data to uh, different regions so that if we have to switch, the data is always available for monitoring. So S3 is anyway a global store, right? We were moving data from multiple regions to S3. We are on AWS, not <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we just moved our, some of the workload in Azure. I'll definitely try that out and see if that is useful. But in our experience, I'm not trying to advocate AWS here. Uh, we have been using AWS from last 10 years. But uh, we have been able to find the cost and uh, the usage more transparent than Azure. Azure works fine, but the support which AWS provides us has been more smoother. Us. That's why we have sticking to AWS for now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good note. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Pass pass yeah. that feedback to my team. Yeah. Yeah, in the Thanos compactor which we provided, now you can. Oh. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Function of matrix, not the days. So basically, I want. Function of matrix, not the days. So you want to downsample a particular metric and not. Yeah, not yeah. A, huh, that a critical, you can critical workload. Huh, so in our case, what we were doing, you, so you can pick what data you need to downsample and keep it for longer version and discard the other. In our case also, we are also discarding some of the data which, is, which we don't need for 365 days or even eternity. This, this sample which we have showed you, this is only data which needs to be retained. Okay. Yeah. And what about, uh, so whatever uh, you have chosen solution, resampling, you cannot go back. We have tried that. In our case, it has been able to work because the downsampling which we were doing is based on max, min, and average. 
So we were able to reproduce it to some level. We were doing it to uh, build some intelligence on top of it, if I tell you frankly. But real data is real data. <laughs> yeah. Thank yeah. you. It was a nice presentation. Yeah. Anyone want to share a mistake that they have made? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> or you can hit us later on also. I'd love to uh, talk to you about yeah, those. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if any of you have you know, similar stories or experiences, yeah. you'd like to share that. We have a pretty active podcast. It's called the Incidentally Reliable Podcast. Uh, we talk about talk to SREs and you know their long careers in history. Talk about the mistakes, the volume stories. So you know, do check that out. And uh, yeah, if any of you would like to be on that, do reach out. We'd love to hear from you. And we are continuously hiring for backend and infra guys. Do hit us up on the career sure. page and love to actually talk to you about that. Yeah. It's on YouTube, Spotify. It's on I, YouTube. I, can, you, I think it's there on the link as well on the QR you code. Want to you can find that over there. Show them. Uh, you want to show it? Yeah, I could share that as well. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, currently we have a few episodes up. The last one was with uh, Manoj Sebastian who served at Flipkart. Uh, and you know, that was a treasure trove of stories uh, on how Flipkart, like companies like Flipkart, Atlassian, Yahoo manage uh, their scale. So uh, definitely, if you are into site reliability stories, you know, war room nightmares, definitely check this out. We'd love to hear it from you guys as well. So if any of you would like to be on this, do reach out to me. Any other questions? We have a few minutes. Thank you, guys. Yeah, I think that was it. And thank you, thank Sienna, you so for giving us the opportunity. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah.